What up? It's your boy T Bear. I'm gonna be asking today's is wrestling Wednesday. Mm. Is reason why I said that today's feels Friday. Reason why I said accidentally said wrestling Wednesday. Everybody check out another episode of From Dead Meets. What's your favorite scary movie? And I, uh, right now I'm doing mostly mainly the wrestler wrestlers right now. As you know, as a lay, I've been doing a dear wrestler. We did Jericho with Sleepaway Camp Two, um, Orange Cassidy and. Or Orange Cassidy and the uh, and the best friends with with uh, Event Horizon, and then we last week we did Jade with with Evil Dead. Ah, that's why. Oh, nah, I'm gonna probably say that for this. I was thinking about that, then I say, you know what? I'm gonna probably gonna say that for the franchise uh, poll. I come on soon though, but um. But either way, we're we're we have a new, we have a new entry though. I said I'm keeping it wrestling. Last new entry was was Liv Morgan was Liv Morgan on Child's Play. The new entry from WWE is the one only the no, not the, the most recent king of the ring is Xavier Woods on Hostel. So the choices was Nyla Rose, Nyla Living Dead, the reboot. Xavier Woods on Hostel, Liv Morgan on Child's Play, Mark. Um, Maka Black or K also Black on Aliens and the Bunny AK Ali on Pump Master with a landslide victory of 64%. We're going to go from AW to WWE as we check out Liv Morgan on Child Play. You know, Liv Morgan right now is one of the top over super women superstars on WWE along with the current WWE. WWE's Raw Champion Bianca Belair. A lot of folks was hoping that Liv wins the money in their bank and gets the title and wins the title as well too. Whether it is against Bianca Belair or or Ronda, hopefully Ronda, because I want Bianca to be champion for a while and still be a face for a while too. But but she 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 looked up, she, we'll hear her talk about her favorite screen movie, which is Child Play. The child plays a classic as always. Duffy check it out a couple of times. As she did, I think I did. I, I did a kill count reaction. I think to two, but for I think I think I have done the first one. But I said, but I have seen the first one plenty of times as well too. As you, of course, I also watched the uh, the um series as well too. The Chucky series was pretty awesome as well too. A good follow up. But other than that, let's check out Liv Morgan's of uh, saying in Child's Play. Let's get it. What do you think? I think you know what these. I like to add my two cents on the conversation they bring up, whether whether it's about child play or something related to the conversation, not related to the movie that maybe thinks about some stuff. So, if you feel like I'm doing I'm doing this video longer than ever, I do apologize. You know, I try to this is my way to make the video interesting, not just me watching people go back and forth with an interview. I like to share my input as well too. So, just to give you a heads up. We're dead meat. Real dead meat. You're dead meat! Go ahead and laugh, you guys. If I ever find a little glasses of business, they're dead meat. Hey everybody, welcome back to What's Your Favorite uh, Scary Movie? Hey guys, Chucky, this is uh, Cole. Be the show where I talk to people about their favorite scary movies. Today's guest is Liv there Morgan from the Woo! WWE. Hey! Hi! Hey, thanks so much for joining me. Oh no, thank you for having me because I'm super, super, super excited because I love Chucky. <laughs> yes, joining me uh, to co-host this one is Chucky since mm -hmm. Liv's favorite movie is Child's Play. The original, oh. I had to make sure. The original? Yeah. <laughs> Did he name him? No, you know what? His name is Chucky. I didn't want to try to uh, force a different Got name it. on him and then come to regret it. You don't need to read him at the wheel. Chuck yeah, Google. exactly. Don't fuck with the Chuck. <laughs> Before we get into Child's Play, though, I wanted to ask you what your experience is with the horror genre. If you watched it as a kid, if it's something you got into later, if you just like a few movies. Yeah, Um. so I've been watching horror movies, scary movies, since I was, since I can remember, really, to be honest. I grew up with four older brothers, and they were always making me watch, at the time, it's so horrific, you know, I'm like five, and I'm watching Leprechaun, and I'm just like, wow. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Leprechaun's a good poll. Every 
ring around a rosy, a pocket full of posy. As I got older, I found different reasons why I like it and why I think I'm so drawn to it now is because when you watch a scary movie and there's a bad guy, why is he like that way? It is very misunderstood. To me, that is appealing because whatever their reasoning is, they feel so justified, you know, in their mind. They're not the bad guy. So I find it interesting to just watch them from that perspective. Like, yes, I know he's the bad guy, he's doing terrible things, but something made him or her think that they're righteous in what they're doing. And I like to just look at it that way. No one takes a leprechaun. Well, that's a good way she's to look at it though, because um, her, her, her being a wrestler, you know what I mean? You know, you know she, uh, she portrays characters. Currently, she's a face, but she does. She did have her run as a heel, though. Um, one time, especially with with the group, the Riot Squad, and everything, and they probably in, in, in during her time as the Riot Squad, she probably thought her heinous actions towards their faces were in good justice and stuff like that as well too. Even though we didn't see it that way, but in her mind, and though, and for those who are fans of the bad guy villain the hills see that way too but us face fans are good guys the good guys didn't see it that way but yeah let's keep going oh that's interesting yeah i've talked to a lot of people about liking the horror genre and i don't often hear that they like it because it gives a chance to look at movies from the bad guys perspective yeah and you kind of have a little bit of time like you can be creative with it too you know they might not give you all the answers so it's kind of left up to interpretation like what do you think affected him so badly that he wants to go kill all these people you know i don't know but also i love to be scared i love to be scared <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's it's a lot of fun is child's play one that you've seen since you were young yeah yeah, yeah. i was like one of my first horror movies and i believe believe in um, possessions and I believe in spirits and I believe in ghosts so it was realistic in a sense to me yeah. that you know maybe this doll didn't get possessed by this murderer you know I don't know it's not the most far-fetched to me which seems weird but it's really not so yeah. it's just a little bit of realistic in there too which scared me I often hear from people that Chucky is the scariest horror movie killer to them and that's from people who may not even believe in that kind of stuff but if you do have a belief in that it must be like doubly terrifying <laughs> <laughs> because I'm like that could happen like it sounds crazy but that could happen I think at least you know I don't know but definitely there's a possibility so you saw this from a young age and were you always just into the idea of a killer doll um I don't know what my exact appeal to Chucky was really to be honest um I think because he was a little bit funny he's not mm. so serious or stoic that was personality which I was drawn to what are you fucking nuts <laughs> <laughs> It was just like it's different. I had never seen anything like that at that point in my life. Like a possessed doll that is, I don't even know how tall he is, like what, like two feet? And he just owns everybody. In, the, right. in this first movie, is uh, his height kind of differs occasionally because I think just the effects that they had, sometimes they would have an actual, uh, I believe like a little person they dressed person, up. And they had one of, um, I don't know if it was one of the actors, little sister, so she played um, Chucky in a couple of the scenes. That's so funny. Sometimes it works. And then other times there's, there's one shot when they're in the hospital near the end, when he climbs through the window, to get to Andy and he's walking up to the bed. That looks great. But yeah. then Andy runs out of the room and there's a quick shot where Chucky's in the background on the bed and it's mm -hmm. so scary. It's like <laughs> clearly a person in a Chucky outfit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I love it. I love it. He's so handsome. <laughs> he's so handsome. <laughs> Stop it. When she like realizes there's no batteries in this mm -hmm. doll, like I just put myself in her shoes and just what a holy shit. There's no batteries. I don't even know what I did. I, w I wouldn't, I don't know. I would have left the house. I wouldn't have been like, talk to me. I would have 100%. Like, we're moving, Andy. Sorry, we're leaving. I think that that's one of the best moments. You stupid bitch. You took his gun. Did you fuck with me? Oh, this is so intense. He just like his face. I'm trying to remember what, what show that lady was on. I think it was Seven Heaven, if I can recall. Hold on a second. Um, Child's Play. Child's Play. I'm ch always said that that was, that was, I've come to find that was her first, uh, movie, first thing she, well, first thing I come across her. Catherine Hicks, yeah, she came from, s yep, Seven Heavens, right? Yep. That's where I remember from. Yeah, because I was, come on, because I watched Seven Heaven, then I rewatched this, and I'm like, oh, that's the lady from Seven Heaven on this. Cause I remember, because I didn't know, like, the people back then. His face was just so ugly and scary. It was just like, whoa, he was really pissed off. Like, what a change mm -hmm. in demeanor, you know? He just was so scary. It was like, it was wild. I'm scared of you no matter what, no matter who you are. If you could change just like that, I'm scared. Especially with his voice. Like, I love Brad Dourif's voice acting. Brad Dourif. It's like kind of like a Jack Nicholson voice. No questions, just dry. Okay, okay. I caught it. His screaming is just like, Oh! <laughs> so guttural. Yeah. It's 
Really, from his butt is broken. <laughs> his voice performance is so good. And again, it's something that you only get in that second half of the movie, but it's so memorable. Yeah, and he had many, many more after that, you know. In fact, if it was a movie, it would take three or four sequels just to do it justice. Since, you know, you're a little bit younger than me, so by the time you were watching these movies, I'm sure a lot of the sequels were out. Were you always watching the sequels right alongside the Yeah, yeah I loved you. I loved him going to the foster family. Um, I loved that whole story. I loved Bride of Chucky, though. I think he's my favorite Chucky. Oh, yeah. I think okay. more handsome in that one. I don't know. He just was so just cool. And Tiffany sung together. That's like my favorite scene, I think, of almost the whole movie is just Tiffany putting him back together. Yeah, that was the movie that came out when I first really got into horror movies. I think it was a little bit too early for me to see in theaters, but right. I would have had the VHS after it came out on home video. So Bride of Chucky does hold a special place in my heart just because it was like the contemporary movie when I was getting into the horror movies. The one that was out there now and the yeah. new thing, and it was so cool and like fresh and modern, and it had Rob Zombie music in it, which I, I love. Yeah, a little, a little, mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. You know my cringiest part of that movie is like the hardest thing for me to watch. Uh, is it the lip ring getting pulled out? No. Oh, okay, because that always got me. Yes! Oh, it's man. when Chucky was drinking the fish bowl water. <laughs> yeah, it's in the background. I, I just was like, you know, they never show him drinking it completely, but the fish was like really down there with this much, and I just was like, wow. <laughs> I don't know, to me, that was like the most disturbing part of the whole entire movie. It was like Chucky just, you know, pretty much just Kill the fish. I wonder, is that the only animal that Chucky possibly kills? Because some killers walk around killing dogs. Michael Myers eats dogs, which is weird. Yeah, no, I can't recall Chucky ever harming an animal, but he did take that goldfish's air, yeah. water. <laughs> to me, I was like, wow, he's bad. Yeah, because you're a huge animal lover, right? Huge, 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 huge. So I was like, wow. He's the real deal. So, Bride of Chucky is your favorite Child's Play movie? No, it's Child's Play, but Bride of Chucky is my most watched, though. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. Now I don't know, because I feel like I, I was like, wow, I know way more about Bride of Chucky than I even realized. <laughs> mm -hmm. I love all Chucky, so I just chose Child's Play just to be like, you know, the OG. That's actually what I really like about the series is that there's a lot of different things to enjoy about the different movies. They strike such different tones, and that's something that Don Mancini strived for. Like, when he made Bride of Chucky, he wanted to make something different and then when he made curse of chucky he wanted to veer back into more serious and like a gothic horror that's why it's, it is one of my favorite franchises because like i love chucky the character and i love seeing him go through all these different tones but he maintains the storyline like he still talks about andy and andy shows up later play with this, this. <laughs> andy what's on your least Favorite Chucky movie. So my least favorite Chucky movie is yeah, Child's Play 3, 3, actually, the military one. It's kind of boring to me. I thought um, Cult of Chucky was my least favorite. Nika um, ends up being Charles Lee Ray at the end of it, you know? Yeah, at the end, yeah. You didn't like that? Um, I like that. I don't know. I guess I, I'm biased because I feel like I just love Chucky so much that it's hard for me to give him like a bad review. But I just, <laughs> it, wasn't, it just wasn't my favorite. It just wasn't my favorite. I don't know. That movie really seemed to split people. There were a lot of people who really didn't like it. I personally loved it. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was wild like insane but in a good way i did think that it ended kind of abruptly like i wanted more and they yeah. just kind of drive away but hopefully we'll get the tv series i don't know if you've kept up they're oh, talking is, about having a tv so series. this is before the tv series was all made series to continue that storyline to continue that specific storyline with jennifer Till and that that tv series was good anything so it hurt, hurt my heart a little bit because a couple, couple teens got killed and everything and a bit still because i have not thought about it i don't think that many teens got killed in the in the chucky series majority of it was like uh so one time i think I remember teens were getting killed was um child's way three was the way was the military towards the military game when chucky switched the guns out and then the do uh do get catch uh lands on the grenade and all that that's like the only time i think he killed kids but before that it was mostly grown up as a he killed but um i'm not sure um, yeah it was mostly grown up as a dulcie kids kills in there um i think I remember, if i can remember but um no because i think but i think the closest i don't think he killed it i think she died happily died uh nico's uh sister or whatever but anyway she she had to happen to die i think but anyway but yeah chucky chuck chucky's uh series mm, it was good though there's some heartbreaking kills in there as well too but yeah 
Tilly, you know, she just showed up at the end, like, getaway car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I would love to see Jennifer Tilly. <laughs> How come nobody takes me seriously? Nice pitch. Thank you. She's great. And I like that uh, Nika is played by Fiona Dorf, mm. Brad Dorf's daughter. Florida, yeah. So when she's pretending I to be Chucky. I did not know that. Yep. Yeah, dude, they look and sound so similar. Because I've, I've met them both in person at conventions and stuff. And, like, she, oh, when she laughs. The, the part is crazy about it. She plays, uh, she's a playing, uh, Charles when he, like, older Char Charles, human Charles, uh, Chucky, uh, during the series at one point when they, um, because... Oh man, if you have not watched it, it's a crazy story of how they met each other. Like you knew, you really thought that her and um him and Tiffany uh, met each other before the bride Chucky. It was crazy, and he played um he played Charles the the killer. I did not know that was her to to find this. I heard on Twitter. I'm like, wow, they did. She did a good job. She looked just like her dad. Laughs, it just sounds like Chucky laughing. It's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, that makes it so much better. I gotta rewatch it now. Right? She literally grew up visiting the set of these earlier original movies, and then she got to be in them later. So maybe maybe with that knowledge, maybe you'll enjoy Cult a little more, because you can see, especially when she becomes Chucky, it's like her imitating her father. I like that part, you know, and I like that they um killed the therapist. Not the therapist. I don't even know what his actual Oh, yeah, the, the molesty <laughs> doctor. Oh, my God, the worst. I, I didn't see that coming. Yeah, it. just stomping his head in. Yeah, yeah. I, I was happy. Like, I felt like I felt sure, I was like, yeah. Ah! Oh, yeah, bringing it back to the original. You know, we don't get all these sequels if the original movie. That that part right there, um, the first time I watched it, like, because I watched it on Netflix with my friend at the time. Oh man, I I cut my eyes like, oh fuck, me, he he did it. But I look, as you know, I looked through it when I did a reaction to the kill count. Movie isn't as good like, as it, would, it is. It could have time, you know, my kill count was trying to look away just been like a one-off movie but instead it resonated with people so much that it spawned an entire franchise mm -hmm. that's still continuing to this day and getting remade on occasion why yep. do you think it resonated so well with people why did people latch on to this killer doll so much one part of it is he's very vocal you know other than like freddy mm -hmm. cougar there was not a lot of um nightmarish killer you know figures that were vocal and i think that was very relatable shut up you idiot so I think Chucky might be the most relatable, you know, just because he, he, although he was a vicious killer, he was very personable in a weird way. I got a few skeletons in. Yep, he was a he was a, he was a, um top shit talk along with Michael my mm, along with Freddy Krueger. I said Michael never talked, but Freddy Krueger, Freddy Krueger and um and Chucky was like the best talker in, in um horror though. Practically anyone do only ones I could that I knew of, other than you know, Pennywise, but do we want to? But. <laughs> in the closet oh, yeah, pit, oh yeah, pithead. <laughs> See? I think that, and I think, um, I might be wrong, but I think he might have been the first, you know, doll possession. It's like the first of its kind, you know? Like, mm -hmm. that specific was the first of its kind and, like, unique. It was definitely, like, the biggest one. I think that maybe, wasn't there a movie called Magic with Anthony Hopkins or something? Oh, wow. That was, like, a, a puppet or something? So I think Chucky was the well, first was big true. mainstream, if you yeah. will, killer doll. Yeah, funny at times. He had good comedic relief, and I just think um people just liked it. Yes! In your face, lady! It's similar to why a lot of Stephen mm -hmm. King's stories are successful. I think King is really good at remembering what it's like to be a kid and getting the audience to remember what it's like yep. to be a kid. And I think yeah. that this first movie does a great job of that with Andy, who, one, I think is the cutest little kid I've ever seen. And when he makes his mama breakfast. Get the worst breakfast in bed. <laughs> it was so sweet. It was so sweet. I used to make my mom breakfast in bed, too. I, I don't think I burnt the toast that much. Because of that, I was like, I'm going to make my mom breakfast. Aww. Do you think you did a better job than he did? Because his is not good. I didn't burn the toast. Okay, you didn't. You didn't put like a uh, just a mound of butter. <laughs> no, no. I'll tell you what. Why don't I eat this just a little later, okay? Mm -hmm. And then you spend all this time with Andy, who is such a good little actor, even though he stumbles across his lines sometimes. That just makes it cuter. Hey, Chucky. Wanna see my room? It doesn't matter. You know, it doesn't matter. He may have stumbled a little bit. Exactly. I think it makes him more relatable. And so the audience remembers what it's like to be a kid, what it's like to be that scared. And so, you know, in the final sequence, when Chucky's hitting him with a baseball bat, you're really feeling that terror. Also, when he comes back, crispy, <laughs> yeah. still ready to go. I was like, oh my God, that would have scared me the most too, you know? Hello, Andy.
Um, yeah, Chucky does not stay down, man. Nah, no, no, he was crispy. He's been burnt a couple times. He just can't keep a good guy down. God, he's had probably the most varied deaths out of horror yep. killers, possibly. I know Freddy's had a lot, mm -hmm. but Chucky's been blown up, thrown into a fan. It was a fan of the roller coaster, right? Yeah, and three. What else? Had uh, he's been shot? I don't know. Shot with a shotgun, point blank, at the end of uh, Curse by Andy. Oh, I almost forgot that Andy was in Curse. Yeah, it's like a smaller role. You know, actually, I take it back. I don't. Maybe I don't think Cult is the worst. Ooh. I did like to see Andy. I was like, wow, Andy. You know, it just you feel like you know him. Um, it was it was cool to see how he was doing. He was doing well. I don't think I like the replicas. Is what I think I don't like about that movie. It was smart, but I think that's where I was like, mm, you know, now there's like 50 of him. Like, <laughs> yeah, I know that they originally tried to do that with the third movie, but I, I think it was like a budget issue, like they couldn't. So it was an idea that they had way back then, brought back for Cult of Chucky, and then I mean, I find it pretty funny when they're talking about like, I've never felt so alive. Yeah, well, you've been alive for like two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it is. It's funny. It's, there's good in it. You did say that you saw the remake. Uh, how'd you feel about that? I'm having trouble remembering it a little bit. Can you refresh my mind a little bit? Sure, yeah. It's, uh, it's like an AI-based thing instead of uh, any voodoo involved. Yes, yeah. It was like weird technology. Okay, yes, 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 yes. I remember. Yeah, no. <laughs> I don't like. You prefer the voodoo? Yeah, I so prefer the voodoo. Like, you know, I don't know why. I believe in voodoo more than I believe in like evil technology, which is probably more believable, you know, but I don't <laughs> I want him to be possessed. I don't want him to have evil technology built in him because then it just makes him less of a human. Yeah, it makes it less relatable or like the goal of him trying to get a new body for himself. That's no longer present, I guess. Ande do we dembella. Give me the power I beg of you. Yeah, so on the subject of the first movie, are there any favorite scenes or lines that have really stuck with you uh, your whole life favorite since you saw scenes. this at an early age? Or you know what? I'll, I'll broaden this to the entire franchise since we've been talking about all the movies and since it sounds like just Chucky in general is your yeah. favorite. Because like, for instance, for me, from the second movie, when the worker gets those eyes implanted mm -hmm. in him, that has just stuck with me forever. <laughs> I guess what I said before, I love Tiffany slowing it back up. Oh, okay, yeah, in the beginning of Bride. I love that new look. Um, I think at that point in time, that's the one I'd watched most of, so that became the most like um, known and iconic to me, and that's how I preferred him looking. Oh, with the stitches and everything? Yeah, stitches just to see her, work. you know, do it herself. She did the voodoo, thought it it didn't work, and then it worked, and Alexis Arquette is just there mm -hmm. looking crazy. <laughs> it, was, it was just good. It was good. Yeah, I really enjoy oh, that. Oh, that was Alexis Arquette. Oh, yeah, God for serves. His, her, sir, yeah. Your bride. You have a favorite scene? Too? Yeah, the entire final sequence where they get to the factory. Oh, the they... eye. That's the eyes? Oh, okay. The but yeah, the sequence. whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I also really love the relationship between Andy and Kyle. Yeah, it was, it was very sweet. It was very sweet. <coughs> Jesus. Give me that. What the hell do you think you're doing? I wanted to taste it. Get real, it tastes like shit, okay? These things are very bad for you. You know, you don't often get a horror movie where the final sequence is two kids, like two foster siblings helping each other survive and overcome. Like that never yeah, happened. Yeah, they did it, they did it, good for them. One of my favorite lines from the original film is uh, when Chucky's finally up and about and talking to everyone and he goes to the, the voodoo guy's mm -hmm. house to try to get like more explanation as to how to get out yeah. of his body. When he leaves and he's like, I have a date with a six year old boy. I have a date with a six year old Boy. He has a lot of good little like zingers, little one-liners. This one's like funny. It's, it's, I think that's what is just part of his appeal. Especially in, in that first movie, it's so uh, it's more understated than yeah. the out-and-out -out comedy that you get, like especially in Bride and Seed. Hey, 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 hey! Here we go. So I like to ask people who I talk to to see if they can quiz me about their favorite horror movie. <laughs> So, I understand that you have some trivia questions for me about Child's Play. I'm ready. I feel like you're ready to. Well, I have covered this movie before, so I've done research in the past. Do you want it easy, medium, hard, hard, medium, easy, medium, easy, hard, medium, hard, easy? <laughs> Sounds like you're ordering eggs. Uh, <laughs> I, I'll go with easy, medium, hard, and build up to the most okay. difficult one. During the time of part one and when Chucky was introduced, there was another doll actually in production with a striped t-shirt and jean overall. Do you know what those dolls were called? What? 
Another doll? But it wasn't a movie, it was real life. In real life, a doll that was almost like his prototype was released. Oh my man, buddy. I know the like, he was loosely based on Cabbage Patch dolls. Is my that buddy. what you're talking about? No, oh, so it was the My Buddy my Doll, buddy, right? Yep. My Buddy Doll, which which That's making me think back with the new one, they allowed him to be buddy. So I wonder what happened if they went out of business and mm -hmm. so they were legally able to do it. But um, yeah, so My Buddy Doll and mm -hmm. the movie came out and the line never recovered. So I guess that answers that. They just oh. never recovered from the stigma of this killer doll in the same almost striped shirt and overall <laughs> things. My body, my body, my body, my body, my body and me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that poor business. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, now with you. Medium. Oh, man. Do you know how many days this story takes place over? Ooh. Jeez. Okay, and this is, is this including the opening scene with the, the police chase and everything? Yes, sir. Okay, so that happens, and then the next morning, it's Andy's birthday. Cool. He gets uh, a doll from his mom buying it from that creepy guy in the uh, alley who's like, ah, steal this. Okay, so he has it that night, and Aunt Maggie babysits him, and Aunt Maggie gets killed. Next day, he goes to school and go takes the L train, and no one pays any attention to this kid taking a subway by himself to downtown. Eddie Caputo blows up. He's taken into custody and oh god is it just the three days then yes! yeah mm. <laughs> three days so quick i i was like whoa i had no idea i would have been like a no simon <laughs> you really broke it down you really broke it down like scenes day by day that was really good yeah i never thought about it but i, I love movies where it takes place in a shorter amount of time than yeah you but think you would never know you yeah. never know this is my hardest one that i could find and i was like i would never have known this Okay. In the movie, in the beginning of the movie, Andy's mom was working at a department store. What was that department store? Oh, man. Ooh, got you. I, <laughs> you know, this was my savior. I was like, okay, if you get some off, I don't think he's going to get this one. Well, then I'm assuming it's not a real one like Macy's. Uh, my guess is Macy's. Mm -hmm. Do you want another guess? Sears. No, it's Carson, Curie, mm -hmm. Scott, and Co. Wow. What the hell is that? Is that even real? You know, I don't know if it's real, but that's where Andy's mom worked. All right. Mm -hmm. With a very stuffy boss, by the way. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The worst boss. The worst boss. It's my son's birthday. Mrs. Barclay, are you happy with your job here? Yes, of course I am. Then I suggest... Hey, that... chill out, would you, Walter? So what? I got one? I got one right? Yeah, one right. But yeah, the, I, I really... I was I was going through it, and I was like, I'm going to stop him. So he still is that job. When we were talking before we started recording, you were worried that I was going to try to come at you with some trivia. I know. I just was like, I wanted to, like, you know, be prepared. Like, are you going to try to get me? Because I hit me with one. Hit me with one. Do you have oh, one? Oh, Don't God. Do it. No, it was mine. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> I didn't have one, so if I did, I might have I might have sprung it on you. No. <laughs> well, Liv, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me about Child's Play, your favorite scary movie. Anytime. I love movies. You know, scary in particular. So anytime, I'd be happy to come and talk more movies because I love it. It's great seeing you on my TV more often. Oh, uh, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. And so for everyone else watching, we'll have more of these coming up soon. But until next time, be good people. Oh, yeah. Be good. Be good like Mr. Good. Okay, cool. Good. Good. Another good episode. What's your favorite scary movie? With this one with Liv Morgan, though. All right. So next week, I will have, have another poll. We'll add in a new entry. And I think we still have a... We still have some wrestlers left. I think uh, still a couple. I think one or two less wrestlers left, along with um, as well too. So we'll let me know what's one y'all want me to do next. Well, then that if you like my reaction and my little reception, my little little two cents in on this video with uh, Liv Morgan one child's play for what's your scary movie with that me like, share, subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's your boy T Bear signing off. One love.